Avoiding deadline exceeded errors in Google App Engine by following some best practices. Deadline exceeded errors in Google App Engine are the result of a request taking more than the 15 seconds that's allotted for a request to happen. This is usually because you're doing a warm up and the time that it is taking to do the request and the spin up is more than that 15 seconds. You can get it other times, but they're going to usually be because you're doing something too complex and it took too long to execute. The most frustrating DEEs are actually when you're just serving regular traffic and all of a sudden your error rate goes up and you check the logs and it turns out that there are all these deadline exceeded errors. This happens usually because you haven't gone into your application settings and configured the max idle time, the min idle time, the max instances, and the min instances. If you have set the max pending latency to automatic, you could have a queue of requests that was going to take 12 seconds to get to. So a request, you know, 16 new requests came in, each request takes 750 milliseconds, and so you're 12 seconds in. All of a sudden, App Engine says, hey, we really do need another instance to serve this. The pending latency is getting awfully high, and it's going to try and spit up an instance and serve the request. Well, if you're already at 12 seconds because of the pending latency, you only have three seconds to spin up that instance. And if that instance takes seven seconds to spin up, you get a DEE. Now, in order to avoid this, you can simply lower the max pending latency. Your max pending latency should always be short enough that you have time to initialize an instance in order to make sure that it's going to spin up in time. To know how long your instances take to spin up, you're going to want to build a warm up handler. And that handler is going to basically just serve a hello world do your imports and initialize some variables. Uh, lots of times what you're going to want to do is spin that up, log when you started the spin up, and log when each of the imports happened so that you know what the timeline of that spin up looks like. When you know how long it takes, you're going to want to take 15 seconds minus the spin up time and make sure that your max pending latency is at least that long. Now, because applications don't always spin up in the same amount of time, you're going to need some pad padding and you're probably going to want to do some load testing to say how long does it take to do this spin up by building a load tester that's going to fire like 400 requests at your application all at once so you can see that instance spin up and make sure that they all finish in time. Often, just as a general user experience, you want to set your max pending latency to no more than 800 milliseconds. And this will just generally fix your problems because as long as your instance then can spin up in 14 seconds, which is quite a bit of time, things will just work. And 800 milliseconds is a long time to wait for a request. When you're loading a web page, if it's 800 milliseconds before the server even starts processing the request, your page is going to feel sluggy. You know, I try and make my web pages load in less than 500 milliseconds. And so if you've got a pending latency of 800 milliseconds, you're going to take at least twice as long to load the entire page or, you know, to start loading the page as my page took to load the entire thing. I realize that that isn't always possible, especially if you're doing database requests or you're doing some math or you know, those kinds of things. But you still have to think about if you're waiting, you know, if you've got your max pending latency set to three seconds, that's three seconds that the user is going to be waiting for things before you've even started working on them. And so running that max pending latency down to something like 800 milliseconds, um, testing with, you know, the min idle and max idle basically sets to automatic so that you can see what the most instances is you've ever needed to spin up so that you can say this is the maximum idle instances I would ever want to pay for are all best practices that will allow you to tune your application in order to avoid those DEE errors. 
Also make sure that you're only importing things once in your Python code or your Java code. This tends to be more for Python people. I don't know why that is. Maybe there's just more of us running Python than running Java. But make sure that you're only doing your imports once. If you're doing imports multiple times, the warm-up is going to load each of those and your warm-up is going to take longer. Um, make sure that you have done that load testing. Hit your app with you know, 400 requests simultaneously so you can see how it scales and what the threshold is so that you can be planning those things out. By setting your min idle instances, you can make sure that you never get to the point that you have too much load and that things take too long. But really the biggest, easiest thing you can do to avoid DEEs is set your max pending latency to something around one second and whatever you're willing to pay for. But generally leaving it at automatic is a bad thing.